Hello everyone. What do we see here? Well, that's a sperm moving. Do you have any idea which structure is helping in its movement? That structure which is rotating? Yes, it's the flagella. So today we are going to learn about cilia and flagella that helps in movement in different kinds of cells. Cilia and flagella are kinds of cytoplasmic projections that are present in different kinds of cells and help mostly in movement of the cell itself or other substances in contact with the cell. For example, a long flagella which is usually a single or a tuft of elongated tubular structures help in locomotion in case of bacteria, in case of sperm cells, in case of some motile spores or gametes, in case of plants and animals. Whereas very small hair-like projections called cilia are usually present all over the cell surface and can help in movement of substances that it comes in contact with. Let me give you an example. Inside our respiratory tract, and inside the fallopian tube of the females, there are cells which are provided with cilia. These are ciliated epithelial cells. So whenever in a tubular organ, the inner lining is surrounded by cells provided with cilia, these cilia, they carry out a certain kind of movement that helps in substances to pass through the tube. So cilia and flagella, they have similar structure, However, the cilia are much smaller in size and usually many present all over the cells like we see in case of paramecium and flagella usually is a very elongated structure, whip-like structure which helps in locomotion for example in case of sperm cells and in case of bacteria. Flagella in case of prokaryotic cells and that in case of eukaryotic cells, they differ in their structure. So in case of prokaryotic cells, the flagella is made up of flagellin proteins, whereas in eukaryotic cells, the flagella has a particular arrangement of a specific type of protein called tubulin. However, the structure of cilia and flagella remains the same. So the first part of the structure of a flagella is the base with which it remains attached to the cell membrane and cytoplasm and that is known as the basal body or the blepharoplast. The basal body of cilia and flagella has a structure extremely similar to that of centriole. What does that mean? It means that it has nine triplets of microtubules arranged in a circle and at the center there are no microtubules. So this is known as the 9 plus 0 arrangement. For details you can refer to the structure of the centrioles. The basal body was present from the cell membrane embedded in the cytoplasm. Now inside the cytoplasm to give this flagella a little more support and strength there are fibrillar structures called rootlets with which anchor into the cytoplasm and provide support and anchorage to the entire flagella. The basal plate is present just above the basal body that is towards the exterior of the cell. So we have rootlets then basal body then basal plate. Now at this point there is a structural change that takes place in the entire protein arrangement. So in the basal body we had a cylinder made up of nine triplets of microtubules. So there were nine groups of microscopic proteinaceous tubules arranged and each group consisted of three microscopic proteinaceous tubules. But from the base plate out of these three one microscopic tubule stops uh, elongating and now from here the entire structure is made up of nine groups of doublets that is nine groups of microtubules where each group consists of two microtubular structure. The shaft or the actual part of the flagella that is visible to us is made up of a specific arrangement of microtubules. So first let me describe what is a microtubule. You see tubulin proteins are arranged in an elongated pattern 
one beside the other. Two types of tubulin proteins A and B remain arranged in an elongated manner and if you see in cross section you can see two tubulin proteins in cross section. So this forms a couple or a pair of tubulin protein we call it a doublet. Now the entire flagella if you see in cross section what is its shape it is cylindrical. So the exterior of the cylindrical the, the periphery of the cylinder is made up of nine doublets arranged in a circle. What does that mean? Two types of tubulin protein A and B forms a pair and there are nine such pairs as shown here to form the peripheral circle. Now at the center there are two tubulin proteins forming the central core or the central hub. So you have nine plus at the center two, two arrangement. This is called the nine plus two arrangement of microtubules. Now you have to keep the microtubules attached to each other. At the same time, you have to keep the microtubules attached to the central hub so that they don't disperse. This creates a cartwheel model. Now let's see what a cartwheel looks like or what the model looks like. So from every A subunit, proteinaceous hooks appear from A subunit and B subunit two proteinaceous hooks appear which are made up of diene proteins and they have ATPase activity. So from one couple of A and B microtubule, the diene protein projects and attaches to the B subunit of the next couple and then it can use ATP to allow some movement. This helps the entire flagellar periphery to move so the entire flagella can move. You also have to keep the center attached to the peripheral microtubules. So from the center, nine spokes appear like the spokes of the wheel that keep the center attached to the peripheral doublets. To keep the doublets connected with each other, there is another kind of protein called the nexin protein also known as the linker. It keeps the B subunit of one couplet connected with the A subunit of the next one so that this entire periphery made up of proteinaceous subunits can remain as an intact layer and not disperse. So as we can understand the structure of the flagellar shaft is made up of tubulin proteins that are arranged in 9 plus 2 arrangement two subunits at the center and nine doublets surrounding the center which forms the flagellar shaft. Now this entire shaft remains sur surrounded by or covered by the cell membrane except possibly the last portion. In case of sperm cell, the last portion is without the cell membrane. It can also have the cell membrane in certain cells. So are there any differences between cilia and flagella? Well, structurally not much, but yes, in case of cilia, they are much smaller in size, flagella, they are much longer whip-like. Cilia usually are present like hair or pro hair-like projections or bristles all over the surface of the cell. Flagella usually located in certain regions. Flagella shows undulating motion which is kind of a rotatory motion whereas cilia shows pendular motion which is moving in one direction. Cilia is usually responsible for movement, for feeding, for aeration, etc. Flagella is essentially for movement. So these are the basic differences between cilia and flagella. So all these cilia and flagella, they require certain kind of stimuli so that they can beat. Let me ask you a question. Can you find out what is the stimulus for the flagella of the sperm cell to move? Where does it get its energy from? Is there any external factor increasing the flagellar movement? Please find out and let me know in the comments below. I wait eagerly to look at your answers. Hope you enjoyed the video and you learned from it. Do hit the like button and share it with your friends if you did. If you haven't subscribed to our YouTube channel yet, 
please hit the subscribe button right now and click on the notification bell. Do check out the full courses on our website and Android app, Manocha Academy. Links are all given below. So let's stay connected and let's keep learning together.